What's going on guys? Today I have a how-to video on how you can install a single point sling adapter on an AR platform rifle. A lot of guys prefer the single sling over the two point or three point sling because of how it's used. I'm not going to get into that. You can look that up yourself. But this is simply how to install it. First you need your rifle obviously. Um, you can go ahead and separate the upper receiver from the lower receiver because that's the first step. Uh, as far as tools, you don't need but it's very advised to get an AR stock wrench. This is a Tapco wrench, costs 15, 20 bucks maybe, and it's well worth your time. Without this wrench, you might need a punch and a hammer, and you could damage the rifle. So go ahead and spend an extra couple dollars on this. Next, you need a the actual adapter itself. This is the Mag Magpul ASAP, which is the ambidextrous sling attachment point. That's what it stands for. And that's what we're gonna replace onto the rifle. Finally, if you want, you can spend between 5 and $10 on a magazine well vice block. It makes your life a lot easier when you're loosening the castle nut. You'll see what I mean when I do this, but this is a $5, $10 part. This is a pro mag, and I highly advise that you spend the money on that. The last two tools that you might need would be a small flathead screwdriver. I'll show you why that could help you, and some vice grips or, uh, or needle nose pliers, either one. All right. First step, we're going to use the uh, we're going to put the magazine well vice block in to your vice. All this is going to do is hold your rifle in place and makes life a lot easier. Simply slip it in the magazine well like a regular magazine, and it attaches. If you need to remove it, you just hit the magazine release. You guys know where that is, and it comes off. But that will hold your rifle in place, and you can work on it. So the first step is to remove the buffer and buffer spring. Now. Down in the bottom here, you can see there is a retaining pin that holds that down there. You can push the buffer spring in if you need to and push down on that that pin. Now, it might be easier if it's a new rifle because the springs are tougher to use a flathead screwdriver if you need to do that. So push back on that, lower your spring, and remove your buffer and buffer spring. Next step, you're going to loosen this castle nut. This is where I suggest you use your AR armor's tool. And you're going to use the castle nut tool here to loosen. If not, you can use a screwdriver. Tap down lightly, but I suggest you spend a couple bucks on this. So you're simply going to attach the castle nut on there, and then you're going to loosen it up. Once you break the seal on that, hold on. Make sure you hold on to the end plate here because there is a spring in here. It's a very small spring giving pressure pushing out. So hold on to your end plate while you unscrew the castle nut all the way that you can until it stops. Now you can loosen the tension on this end plate and you can maintain control of the spring. The spring is under here. I'll take it out and show you guys. That's the spring you don't want to lose if you can help it because then you're going to the gun shop and getting another one. Put that off the side in a safe location. Okay, the next step is you're going to remove the buffer tube. Now, remember this retaining pin for the buffer I talked about earlier. There is a spring under there and it's pretty strong. So go ahead and use your flathead to apply pressure down to it and unscrew your buffer tube completely. Once you get it unscrewed enough, you can maintain control of the retaining pin and you can take it out. There's the spring and the retaining pin for the buffer. Put that aside, don't lose it. Continue to unscrew your buffer tube until it comes all the way off of the lower receiver. Remove the stock end plate, put that off to the side, and now you're completely taken apart, ready to reassemble. All right, now we're back to reassembly to get your single point sling end plate to replace the stock. What you're going to do is you can go ahead and place your small spring back in this hole here. The takedown pin detent spring, I believe it's called. And you can place the plate back on here. There's this area here which is protruding a little bit that fits into this round hole here. So it's, it's a little bit easier than taking it off. Like so. And you're going to hold this in place while you screw the buffer tube 
back into the receiver. Do this nice and slow. You don't want to screw up your your uh, your stock at all while doing this. The point in which you're going to stop screwing this in is when you're looking on the inside of the receiver and the buffer tube starts to get in the way of where your buffer spring and buffer retaining pin get in the way. Once your stock is screwed in that much, you're simply going to spring, slip the spring and retaining pin back in the hole where it came from originally, push it down, and then you're going to screw in one more full turn. You'll be able to see this when you're doing it yourself. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Also, what comes with the sling is some pretty detailed instructions. This is basically just a video on how to do it. At this point, you're still getting pressure from the sling from the spring, so you need to finger tighten down your actually I'm sorry, take that back. Loosen your your castle knot. The sling comes with two two little pieces here. You've got a small one and a big one. They're very, very similar, but one is bigger than the other one. Depending on the type of I can screw this down temporarily to keep the spring from coming out. Depending on the type of buffer you have, whether it's mill spec or non mill spec, very, uh, determines which pin you will use. This is a mill spec, so I'm using a small pin. You're going to slip this underneath the bottom and it locks your stock into place where it needs to be. I'm not sure if you guys can see this on the video, but it slips in there and that's what tightens it down. So I'm going to pause the video slip it in there and then I'll show it to you once it's installed. It's a little hard to manipulate the camera so you guys can see it but I'm going to go ahead and install this pin in here and then I'll, I'll cut back and show you what it looks like installed. Alright, I figured out a way to show you guys how to do this uh, as far as video wise but go ahead. Castle nut, castle nut loosened and you can see in there the channel in the buffer tube and the gap in the sling adapter. So you can see where it needs to go. If you're if you're off, it would look like that or like that. This basically is what keeps your your stock in line. It keeps it locked in there when you need to shoot, so it doesn't wiggle its way out. There you've got that in place. Now you're all lined up, you've got everything going good. Finger tighten your castle knot down so that your spring isn't fighting against you. And you can relax your hand, might get a little tired. Adjust back horizontally and now all you need to do is tighten down the castle knot with the wrench again to 40 plus or minus two inch pounds. So, Go ahead and tighten it down. Believe it or not, 40 inch pounds is not that tight, but it's reasonably tight. If you got a torque wrench, start on there. If not, reasonably snug and uh, keep an eye on it. If it starts to back out after shooting it, just tighten it down again. But if you're not comfortable with working with torques or anything like that, then, then just have a gunsmith or somebody who is comfortable with it. Torque it to 40 plus or minus 2 inch pounds of torque on your castle nut and you're complete. All you have to do at this point is reassemble your rifle, upper receiver back on, take down pins installed, feels good. Last step is attach your sling. This is a condor sling, if you're wondering. And now you've got a single point sling on your AR. That's all there is, guys. Hope you enjoyed.